Now, another thing about Syriza is we have to consider are there really the objective conditions for a socialist revolution and the establishment of worker state in Syriza as things stand in that country. I'm not going to try to answer that. But it's got to be considered. Could you win a majority of uh, Greek workers today for a break with the United European Union with all that entails, with all the problems for them that that entails in terms of like going into other countries to work? Okay. I'm not sure that's true. I'm not sure it's true in Venezuela either. And here I thought the comments by uh, Suzanne were, were significant. That is the, the fundamental axis of what they did in Venezuela was Bolivarian. That is to unify the peoples of Latin America against imperialism and for their sovereignty in that region so that they could pursue their different experiments in social change. Now, that Bolivarianism is not referring to something that happened 200 years ago, but to the urgent situation they are in today. And if you pursue that line of thought, it explains a lot about Venezuela. They're trying to create the material basis for a genuine and successful socialist revolution in that part of the world through the unity of different peoples who can combine their economic foundations and strengths together and make a go of it. Uh, there's a lot could be said to explain that. But one of the big problems in Venezuela is the limitations of that process over the last decade. Yes, it has gone forward on some fronts, more diplomatic, but has not gone forward as much as one could hope on the front of mass struggles, and that creates a problem in Venezuela. Now, I, I, I raise these two questions of Venezuela and Greece because I think that there is, in this wonderful discussion today, among all of us, including me, a certain impatience, which we're going to have to control to understand the process going forward. When was the last socialist revolution in this world? Well, you might, I'm not sure if we'd agree on that, but I think we'd agree it's a good while back, you know. How many countries are there in the world today where there is a genuine objective situation where a socialist revolution is really posed? Are there any? What is the significance of the fact that the working class has been in a process of retreat for several decades, moreover, a process involving some degree of disintegration and recomposition of the working class, which is, it, I would say, in its early stages, not complete yet, you see. Uh, what does all that mean for us? And so here, while I agree with, with uh, Adam and the other comrades that emphasize the importance to beware against the rightest dangers in all United Front and, and workers' government talk. The, 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 the big problem we face, we who have been trained in the, in the school of the Russian Revolution, is to know how to take these lessons and then apply them creatively in new situations. And I think that for all their weaknesses and problems, Syriza and the Bolivarians in Venezuela have been strong on that front, and we must be strong on it too, you see? And what does that mean practically? I have no idea. But just to take one example, why are socialists so backwards on, backward on ecology? It's so much our question. It's so obvious that socialism is the key question for, it, ecology is a key question for socialism. Why are socialists? Because socialism is a conservative current today. It's a current longing to recreate the conditions of the past when things were so much better, you see and longing to find ways to take the models which we know and apply them in, in circumstances today when the circumstances simply do not permit that, you see? So that's our problem. Let's turn it on, our, on its head, you see, and free ourselves to apply the spirit and inspiration of our historical lessons in, in new and as yet not fully understood circumstances. Thank you.